So we are talking about Madrega's levels of tshuva in preparation for Rosh Hashanah, and Rosh Hashanah is tomorrow night. We've been talking about Judgment Day for 30 days. Have you done anything outside of getting a haircut, getting ready for your trial? I wish I was in charge that there would be a camera that I could control with my eyes so that the audience would see the faces as I speak, how they react. They would see why I say what I say and why I don't say what they think I should be saying. Tov. So tshuva, we said yesterday, is not something that you can do lo lishma. You cannot have an ulterior motive when you do tshuva. Tshuva is only if you're doing it for the right reason. That, what is that? That you truly are sorry for the way you were thinking, speaking, and behaving for this last year. And you want to fix it. You want to make it better. You tell your mom you're sorry? Why not? You can't tell me that you didn't do anything to annoy her the entire year. That needs to be part of the conversation. You say, Mom, I, I want to say sorry for, you know, give her the long list. For example, you know, not turning in your socks inside out, you know. They hate that for some reason. I don't know why. It's like a big thing. When they, you know, you pull it out, they're inside out. So they, they, they want it. No, put it back normal. You have a lot to, th- to ask forgiveness from your parents. So, tshuva. If you focus on the truth that is in you, the emits, then you can come to do tshuva mitit, true tshuva. And even if it's just a little spark from the truth. And what does the truth mean when I say that? What do I mean? That if you really think about it and concentrate a little bit, you will discover in yourself what you did wrong, what you need to improve. You know. You think all these Karens and Kevins don't know that they're out of control and what might not in the middle of their actions, maybe not. But if they had just one moment to like look inside in their truth, they would realize, what are you doing? And I think at the core, this is what Rav Dessler is pointing out. <clears throat> At the core, we do have an ability to discover our conscience. Western society is very good at removing guilt. You shouldn't feel guilty about anything. Don't feel guilty. Be who you are. Explore. Right? Well, the alphabet different things that they come up with, okay. But the consciousness knows, the conscience knows that there's some behaviors that are wrong. If somebody's yelling at you, it doesn't mean you have to yell back. I want to just silence the phone that if it goes off, 
It's uh, usually you'll hear it because of rockets being fired at different places in Israel. So, it's going to be a little tricky, this Rosh Hashanah. Shmuel, I don't think they're drafting you yet. Sit over here. Yeah, why not? As long as you're not in front of the camera for the shidduch, you know, spot, and everybody's fine. What, 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 what is this? What? What are you so happy to see? Got a haircut? Wow. It's amazing. It's good? What do you think? No comment. How much did you pay for it? 25 shekels. <coughs> for 25 shekels, that's good. That's pretty good. That's all I need. Yeah. No, that's a, you got a good deal. What do you think it's like? Good. Good? Yeah. Not as good as yours. Uh, no. Oh, come on, though. No. Nobody can beat this. This is very great. What? Yours was free? Mine was free, yeah. Well, the second time. What does that mean? Oh, the third time. Third time. What? <laughs> I got to hear this. You went to a barber that he screwed up your haircut first time. You went to him two more times? Okay. Where did you find this guy? Here yeshiva. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Same guy. He did my hair also. He did he mine did also. Job. I, I'm sure. Yeah, good. Wonderful. Walking commercials. Bo <laughs> Hashem. <laughs> So, every the greater your discovery of your inner self, the greater will be your return to Hashem. The more you discover about who you really are, this emes, this pnimius, then the more your going, your tshuva is going to be a higher level. Very important principle. Sometimes we get excited. Sometimes we get emotional. People think that if you're emotional, you're moved, you're excited, it means that the tshuva is going to work. If Dessler says it's a good start, but it's not going to persist. And as people get inspired, they decide to grow beards, wear black and white. They decide to wake up in the morning for shachris. I know, Benny, shocking. <laughs> shachris, 7.30. And so, that is not going to help. The only way it's going to help if you come to true realization that you already want to change your life. Person can get inspired. Yeah, I want, you know, I'll come to Yeshiva. They get here, they get into a bed. There's a guy snores next to them. And some other guy's trying to invite them as a shower buddy. And they're like, this is, well, this is completely wrong. This is what I thought it was going to be, right, Blake? <laughs> Good, thank God. So, Rav Dessler tells us that after the emotions, after the excitement, there needs to be concrete, deeper change in ourselves. Rosh Hashanah is inspiring. The davening, the singing, the, the whole atmosphere, the kedusha, the holiness. But the question is, what do you do with that? How do you harness it? So that whatever you decide to take on, whatever you decide to, I'm changing. 
that it's going to stick. The highest level of tshuva is when... Go ahead. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Next time, don't bring your pet to class. Okay, you leave your pets in your room. What? A bowl. I'm telling you, it's like Shawshank Redemption. So you're trying to catch flies because he has some bird that he has to feed in his pocket, you know. Guys, come on. The highest level is when you are forgiven and the entire world is forgiven because of you. That Hashem says, okay, we'll forgive him and I'll forgive all the sins of the world so that he could continue to serve me and move ahead. The Gemara says in Yuma, Haya Rabbi Meir Oimer, Gdola Tshuva, for an individual who did tshuva, mochalin law, they forgave him, and they forgave the entire world. So before you get excited and want to sign up for that plan, let's take it down a notch. Right? We're not at that level. So the bal tshuva, why is the entire world forgiven? Because he does so much chesed to the world. He feels so much unity with everybody else that he's really here for everybody else. He's not really here for himself. And because of that's his attitude, that's his position, then the entire world is lifted. So, we know that the first two steps in tshuva is to stop sinning. Right? So give me an example of a sin. That you need to stop. What? Good. I was worried that you're going to give the other one. <laughs> David, you're not supposed to know what the other one is. You just got here. You already know? Okay, good. We have to try to keep him innocent, you know? Eitan, what? what? <laughs> it's your birthday and this is how you behave? <laughs> Happy birthday. I mean, you know, you're the last guy I should make, you know, because you're in Shiduchim and people hear the name. So, oh, there's some Eitan guy. Go watch the. You yeah, can't see him, but he keeps talking, he's doing things. So, it's your birthday. You brought us a cake or something? Where? Did you bring a cake? Ah, so no cake today. No cake today. So if you ever thought of actually bringing a cake, no cake, because it's secular birthday, no cake. Moses, no cake. Take a wreck. <laughs> Pop the balloons. Pop the balloons. It's a secular birthday. <coughs> What's today's date? October 1st. I didn't like that movie. You're wearing the shirt. No. I just do. Listen. One of us, listen, one of us used to be the associate editor of the Journal of Religion and Film. <laughs> One of us used to go to Sundance Film Festival to review movies. So some of them were boring, but some of them were very interesting. Very, very interesting. It's a long time ago, and I don't remember. I watched a Polish movie. 
And it was very interesting. And uh, I had, I quibbled with the translations. Did you like Ushpizim? Ushpizim? Yeah, it's good. It's very good. Tov. So, first stop sinning. Okay? Shai, stop. Just stop. And then the next is to make sure that you're committed not to repeat the sin. Okay? Those two pieces are required. On Yom Kippur, for example, we all promise to be good, not to do averas. Well, what happens after Yom Kippur? We're back to our normal behavior. My people are, you know, Yom Kippur, they're very polite. As soon as they, you know, they go to the meal to break the fast, they're all ready. You know, get away. My bagel. <laughs> Take it easy. Relax. And so, that's what happens every year. So the trick, or at least what Rav Dessler is trying to get us to think about, is that how do we make changes? How do we become better? But make it stick this year. And so, if it's not enough, it's not enough to take on take on the idea of not sinning, that is, it's not enough. So then you have to really have harata, regret about the past. Again, we're looking at sin. There's two pieces to the tshuva. One is looking backwards saying, okay, I'm stopping, and I need to not do it again. But you also need to have part of the process, regret of the act that you were doing. Let's say you're the guy when in the shul they throw candy. You're the guy that takes it from the kids when they're not looking. So the question is, what do we do about that? So first is to recognize what you're doing is wrong. I know taking candy from a baby is easy. Correct. But it's not right. Even if they don't see it. Yeah, it's sponsored by the local dentist. That's what I always say. And so if you think about this, so you say, okay, I'm stopping. I'm not going to take any more candy. And I'm not going to do it again. But now comes the focus on why won't you do it again? Because it's really wrong. And when you're thinking about the aspect of it that is wrong, and you regret doing it. Have you ever been in a situation that you behaved in a way that when you thought about it, you go, know, wow, I can't believe I did that. That's not me. That's not, that was, I don't know what happened. I lost control. And the more attention you give to charata, to regretting the action, then the stronger your resolve not to repeat it is going to be. Which means that for tshuva to work, one has to recognize that what he did was wrong. Right? But to say you're wrong is one thing. But to truly believe it and know that the act itself is evil, 
It brings Tuma to your Neshama. And therefore you are triggering in a positive way regret of what you did. That can help you stick with your commitment not to do it again. Okay? What's funny, it's hard. Good. No Hashem. So, Mesilaz Yesharim writes that when we remove the sin, it's gone. Well, how do you remove it? That the more regret you have, the more sorry you are, the more guilt you feel, more of the sin is erased from your nisham. That's what, in the end of the fourth parak of Mesilat Sisharim, he says. And so your levels of tshuva are all dependent on that piece, on charata, on regret. Yeah. Well, the question is, can a person stay regretful? You can't be in a state of mind of regret. It's, you have to regret the particular act, a particular thought. I mean, if you're sitting in a, you know, and plotting the murder of millions, as some people, that requires serious charata. If you act on it, that requires even more. So, you can't just be regretting, period. It's charata, I'm regretting this action that I took. Or this that I acted upon based on this emotion. Ah, That's a good question. That's a good question. Forever is a long, long time. But the, the deeper the regret, the more you get in touch with your MS inside, then the more the sin is going to be removed from you. And so once it's removed, any aspects of it, any of its trapping, then I guess you would say that after that, you don't need to continue to bring it up. It's a question also, there's people who ask, when we confess our sins in the davening, right? particularly in Yom Kippur, should we bring up sins from previous years? Which is essentially what, very close to what you're asking. I think I've, I've seen both answers, yes and no. I would say that I think it depends of how much you're still carrying this with you. If you still have positive feelings from that sin, like, ah, ja, ah, cheeseburger, then I guess, yeah, you got a little bit more regret to do. But if it's no long, you don't carry that, and there's no drive to, you know, there's no hana, there's no prayer then maybe the answer is you don't need to anymore. And you could focus on wonderful new sins that you've added to your repertoire. We all are sin. Just so that, uh, you know, even David, he's thinking like, me, what do you want from me? I didn't sin. He's saying, I just got here. How could I sin? But he'll tell you. When we say Ashmanu? No? Ashamnu? No? When we say Abidu, yeah. Yeah. That's when we confess. Him. Yeah, but you also have a confession before Yom Kippur. On Erev Yom Kippur. Abidu. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying, how do you confess the sins of the faith? That are, I mean, they, like, can you, do you confess personal sins? 
Yes, but not to a person. Like, hey. No, no, no. I'm saying. I gotta tell you. Then do you hit your? Like, really? You bang your chest another time for each time you do that. Onto They're in on the categories. In the categories, have in mind of what you did. There's a great uh, saying by the teaching by Rav Naftali Mirufshitz. He was a Hasidic master. He once saw one of his Hasidim doing vidui. And he said to him, Stop knocking, nobody's home. So it sounds funny, but this is supposed to awaken something. This is supposed to. It's not just. Or. You know, I mean, this, this is serious. Serious. And so. Harata is going to be. key for our tshuva regret and if you're wondering but Rabbi where are the jokes why aren't you so funny because serious now we can't joke around when Rosh Hashanah is tomorrow night I told you this before, 55 million people were not going to make it from this Rosh Hashanah to the next. 55 million people. Think it's a joke? Where's that number from? 86.7% of all statistics brought in public are made up on the spot. If you, if you look up the figures of how many people die per year around the world, the number is 55 million. They're the latest statistics that I've been able to find. That's from like the universe? The universe? No, the world. The earth. <laughs> the earth. We're not dealing with universe. <laughs> Guardians of the galaxy, okay? I guess. The universe! Listen, if, if, if Fox dies, So, I don't know, think of, think of what happened this year. As soon as the process of judgment from Rosh Hashanah until Hoshana Rabbah was complete, immediately afterwards we had the terrible events of Simcha's Torah and Shemin Yatzeret. That was decided on Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, that period. And even if you're not doing it for this, because you, you know, it's not a question that you fear. But you do, are, you recognize that you want to be a better person. That is, you say, look, I'm 25, it's my birthday, I really want to be the best I can be. I want to be a better human being, I want to be a better Jew, I want to be a better son, I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better Talmud. I want to be a better whatever relationship. That's what we're talking about. And in that sense, if you want to be better, you have to do the cheshbon nefesh, the personal accounting of figuring out what are you doing wrong. That's what a vidui gives you these topics. Now, you have to see what each category is referring to. What type of sins that it's talking about. And say, ah, I do have this problem. I do have this. I have this. And that needs to... And then, regret. Feeling... The shame that this is how we behave. Because trust me, if they played a video of your behavior, 
Or, and you got to see it. You'd be very embarrassed. Wow, that's how I acted. That's... Because we know we are all capable of being much better than we are today. Even you, Benny. Yes. What happens if after you finish the two parts of teshuva, you end up doing the act or half the thought of the act? Well, thought is different than the act. So if you thought of eating lobster, right, that's not a sin in itself. But if you thought about it, got in the car and drove to Red Lobster, ordered it, and then when they brought it, you got up and left. Right? And then now there's a video of you of diner dashing. <laughs> so, in that sense, I think it's different, but if you ate, now you got a problem. So it's not just thinking about it. Kadosh Baruch Hu knows that we are made of basal vadam. We're made of flesh and blood. And that we are not perfect. And that we are a work in progress. And as long as we recognize that we need to improve and we're working on it. So even an occasional slip-up is within the realms of tshuva. You can do tshuva on that. What you cannot do tshuva is where you say, Hashem, this one I'm going to do tshuva, but not now. First I'm going to go sin, and then I'll do tshuva. And Hashem says, now that we're not playing. That is not the game. If you're committed to live a holy life, and you slipped up, that's one thing. It's okay. But to say, L'chatechila, it's like Hashem, listen. I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to have a good time. And what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So why don't you stay in Brooklyn, and I'll go to Vegas, and I come back to Brooklyn, and no harm, no foul. That's not happening. That can't be done. Is that it? So. Is the whole class going to Vegas now? Is the whole class going to Vegas? Why would the whole class go to Vegas? Why not? Well, first of all, why yes? You mean you don't do anything here? Might as well go over there and do nothing over there. <laughs> he's a tzaddik. He doesn't sin over here. All he has, he buys is one little shake one once a week, and that's it. So the rest of the time, he's schlepping beds and mattresses. What do you want from him? What are you going to do in Vegas? What? Gamble? He's not going to gamble. Look at him. He's a Dallas fan. He's going to gamble. That's it. You don't need to go to that. Yes, sir. Do you know what gambling is? You're from South, from South Africa. You don't know what that is. You do? No, I think there is a kasno. There's a separate for. It's not under maradno. Nimrod is when you, you know what Hashem wants, and you know that you shouldn't be doing. Said this Hashem, I'm dafka doing it. Right? Right? Kind of like you know, your rabbi sees you. Hey, Chazara. The stories that I pick up, you know, I'm going to write a book. But I have to change the characters' names to protect the innocent. There are no innocents. They're all our Samer students. None of you are innocent. Even you, Michael. I know you're thinking, you're, what do you want from me? I'm a tzaddik. 
<laughs> so, gentlemen, so I want to wish you that the Kaddish Baruch Hu should accept and listen to all your prayers, that you should have Shana Tova with lots of blessings for you and your family, and that you be zoichet to continue to learn more Torah, to connect more to the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and that we could be good vessels for you to bring you to your full potential. Mincha. <laughs>